You can't travel very far in northern Maine without being reminded that logging remains very active in the region. Logging trucks are seen everywhere, as they now serve as the primary means of transporting logs. Rivers, of course, once filled that role, carrying wood to the sawmills downstream. With log drives now a thing of the past, northern Maine waterways have become a major recreational attraction supporting such activities as whitewater rafting, kayaking, and, of course, fishing. One of my favorite fishing spots in the whole world is on just such a river, one that offers views of Mount Katahdin's southern flank. The west branch of the Penobscot flows through some of the prettiest country you'll ever see, and the section from Lake Chesuncook to Abal Bridge also offers world-class fishing for landlocked salmon. Home base for my Penobscot fishing adventures is always Chowanke Campground, which rents tent and RV sites along both sides of the river, many of them overlooking the Penobscot's storied salmon pool, the Big Eddy. The Big Eddy swirls and boils as powerful currents sweep over its boulders and ledges, and the cold water issuing from the bottom of Lake Chesuncook allows for consistent fishing throughout the season. To see if I could catch one of the Eddy's monster landlocks, I enlisted the help of Dan Legere, former owner of the Maine Guide Fly Shop in Greenville. Dan is well known for his fishing prowess, and in 2015 he was honored by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries with the Wilmot Wiggy Robinson Legendary Guide Award. He also happens to be one of the first guides to employ the use of western-style drift boats on big Maine rivers, and we launched his 16-foot hide on a gorgeous July morning on the Big Eddy. Oh, yeah. A little bit better. One day my father put me out on a stream and uh, said, I'll meet you down at the next pool and with a fly rod with a royal coachman, I think it was. And uh, there was a hatch. And there, every fish in the pool was going after my fly. And it was that day that I actually learned how to hook trout. And I caught a limit of trout right there. The reason why I, I moved to Greenville and the reason why I live here <clears throat> is because I can leave my house in downtown Greenville and in 15 minutes be on a wild trout pond all by myself. <clears throat> Within a uh, one hour radius of our shop in Greenville, there's over 40 trout ponds. And then that doesn't count the rivers and, and, uh, <clears throat> and all the lakes and everything else. It's just unbelievable. You're, we live in a little wilderness community. We call it wilderness <clears throat> community. It doesn't take you 10 minutes to be off by yourself, be on a dirt road and, and uh, find solitude. After leaving the Big Eddy, Dan steered us through a small set of rapids and into the high bank pool. Okay, I'll pick the second one. <clears throat> I'm right about 50% of the time. I go, oh no, he took the first one, and you keep bringing him in. And That's a beauty right there. Very nice. Nice. You know, That's a... doing it is just... Yep, you got it. You're good. Wow. Nice. All right. Ah, yeah, go. man. Nice. Thank you. Well, that was the fish we were looking for. That was the one. Yeah, well, maybe we can get a, maybe a bigger one? We'll keep trying. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love it when a guide says that. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly time passes when you're on the river, and before I knew it, it was time for lunch. One of the great pleasures of a full day drift boat trip is the shore lunch ritual. And Dan had quite a meal in store. Well fed and content, it was almost hard to leave our sunny spot amid the pines, but the salmon were calling and so we returned to the river and the mission at hand. There we go. That's a good 
While salmon make up the majority of fish found in the Penobscot, the river is also home to brook trout, and Dan knew of a special spot where they could reliably be caught. This is a par. Not old enough to get colors. That helps. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Look at that. That is a beautiful fish. Thank you, fish. At around 4 o'clock, we pulled into our takeout spot on the side of the river, where Dan hauled his boat and, after dropping me off at the Big Eddy, headed south along the Golden Road toward his home in Greenville. And so ended a fine day of fishing, as well as a fine pair of adventures, both of them experienced in the shadow of Maine's largest mountain. <laughs>